You know, a lot of guys generally worry about that. And I think the reason they worry that they need to be great hunters to be good in this business is because of the internet. Things on social platforms about deer hunting and duck hunting and then turkey hunting and then, you know, upland bird hunting. And there's just so much of that. Uh, people showing, you know, the animals they've killed. They're showing that when their mounts come back. They're showing limits of green heads. Uh, them turkey hunting in the, you know, in the spring. And everybody thinks, gosh, I gotta do that because here's some top land guys and they're showing all their cool hunting stuff on Instagram. So that must be what I gotta do. Folks, I'm telling you it's not and I'm speaking to you from some experience here I've spent most of my life hunting and hunting hard I'm the kind of guy that when I do stuff I tend to overdo it if I'm not careful it's a kind of a flaw I'm a little bit uh, type A about some stuff and so when I started bow hunting a number of years ago I mean I hit it hard I would start putting up stands uh, in May and June I would start working on my my setups I'd get everything right I'd have multiple stands different wind locations for different spots and I was doing all that in the early summer. I was doing prep all through the year just to get ready to bow hunt. And then when bow season came around, I would make 50 to 70 sits uh, in a year. And so that's just that's just too much, overdoing it. And I'm trying to run a business, I'm trying to raise my family, just way, way out of hand. And, but I was thinking in large part that I really needed to do that to be the broker at Reckland. I was enjoying it, don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy it. But part of me was thinking it was something that I had to do, that it was part of the business. And I got to the point several years ago, I realized, come on, Pat, that's just not the way to be. It is not necessary to be as hard and gung-ho a hunter as you are just because of Reckland. And so here's, here's been a little bit of my progression. Four years ago, I bow hunted four sits. I sat in the stand four times. Now I killed two deer, killed a nice little eight point, killed a doe with my bow. The next year I made five sits. Killed a pretty nice buck. That's all I did, five sits. Now this is going from 50 to 70 sits, down to four, then down to five. And then last year, I didn't hunt a day. I mean, not a single day. I didn't go on any invited hunts to duck hunt with people. I didn't go squirrel hunting. I didn't even kill a rabbit. I didn't hunt a day last year. And this being the fourth year since I started getting my mind a little bit in better place, I'm probably not gonna hunt a day this year. Not hunting isn't the right, isn't any more right than overdoing the hunting. It's just, I'm choosing to uh, focus on some other things with my family. I got growing boys. I just can't invest that time anymore and I'm making it okay not to sit in a deer stand or be in a duck blind or go turkey. I'm just making that decision, making that decision for me, just like you need to make that decision for you. I'm here to tell you, you do not have to be an avid hunter or even a part-time hunter to be good in this business. You just don't. Don't let the social media posts try to tell you otherwise. If you enjoy it, go do it. But if it's not really you, that is okay too. With that said, you do need to have something in your toolbox when it comes to this business. And the first thing you gotta have is competence. You might not be a big hunter. You might not enjoy hunting as much as the next guy, and that's fine. But you need to be competent in hunting land, in recreational land. You need to know what you're talking about when you're talking about properties that are gonna be, you know, strong properties for, for deer hunting, for waterfowl. You need to have competence in knowing what is and isn't good recreational property. You need to know the differences in those properties in various parts of your state or your region, wherever you're selling. You, you gotta know what you're talking about because you're selling property to avid hunters. You might not be out there yourself 70 times a year, but you need to have enough information, enough knowledge to know how to communicate to clients. Number two, you gotta have just some good information that you can share with buyers. They may be looking at a track that's a little bit ducky, uh, but they need some work done on the impoundments. They might need a new well put down to be able to flood. They might need some work done, some dirt work done to get the water to run right. And you've got to have some contacts. You've got to have some resources in your area that you can point to and give people some names and phone numbers, information and contacts to be able to help your clients do the things they want to do to improve their property and make it useful. Third thing, you got to be genuine. 
you go show a piece of property to somebody that's a great deer hunting track or it's in a, a great area for waterfowl or something like that don't don't show up all gung-ho uh, just acting like hey you're a big time hunter when you're not people ask you questions be honest be genuine be sincere about it people know the difference if you're selling a piece of property to somebody who does understand a uh, quality whitetail hunting in their part of the country or they know the difference between a mud hole and a duck hole and you show up and you don't and you're acting like you're all that they're going to see right through you and you're going to lose business you're going to lose credibility if you don't know it's okay not to know tell them you don't know tell them you'll find out be genuine you don't have to be a big time full-time hunter to be great in this business here's another video right here that just talks more about the reality of this business once you watch it check it out and we appreciate you being here